This is a BenQ GW2255LC monitor that's uh, obviously been through hell. Uh, it's straight out of the trash. I've got no idea what's wrong with it, so let's plug it in and see what happens. It's dated 2013, so it's probably seen a few hours and something's gone up in smoke. Or it's just going to work perfectly. Oh, okay. Let's take it apart anyway and see what's wrong, if anything. Uh, this pops apart like any other LCD monitor, I would wager. There we go. And we are inside. Yeah. That's trash falling out. Alright, so let's see what we have inside. Alright, I'm not sure quite what we're going for here, but uh, the mounting mechanism for this foot is absolutely impossible to get out. Yes, there's a visible locking mechanism that goes on the inside of the monitor and this little round peg pops out in this hole and you're supposed to press that down and that releases it but uh, you can't press it down far enough. Uh, this mechanism touches the back of the case uh, before it's down far enough to actually release the foot so I had to remove this from the inside of the monitor to get the foot off and you need to get the foot off in order to get the back side off. So there's that out of the way. Not the top to the side. So let's finally get inside. Mm, rusty. And there are the PCBs. And uh, well, I'm glad we took this apart since we do have some corrosion on the LVDS connector. That's something that's probably occurred while it's been lying in the wet in the dumpster. So I'm really not too sure as to why this thing would have been tossed away to begin with. Uh, I've tested all the caps and it does have really crappy brands, Hermes and Elite. Uh, they all measure just fine, capacitance and ESR wise. Even on the logic board they test fine. So I'm not really sure where to go on. This is just a cheap as monitor. Perhaps someone just got tired of it and got a new one. Threw the old one away. But at this stage I'm just gonna have to clean up all this muck and uh, put it on test for a while, if it runs, it runs. I'll just say thank you very much for a clean monitor, Mr. Dumpstand. Put it back together, I'm not even gonna bother replacing these caps because they test just fine. This thing's probably not seen too many usage hours since that's the case. These, I've seen a few of these similar pages, plus these guys tend to go bad. And since I haven't, eh, I'll just let them run bad. Gee, look at this thing. It has seen some moisture, to say the least. Alright, so in the process of putting it back together, I have noticed that we've got a couple of rather considerable scratches in this thing. And I figured we'd try and see how well we can just scratch those out. So what I usually do with these is I take my fingernail with uh, some moist paper and I just scratch at them. And usually... Ta-da! They go away. Alright, we've got the word up. We should have some signal going in. Contact. Green LED. Thank you. LED. Well, save for my undersized wallpaper. This really looks just fine. I'll just have to let it run for a while and uh, we'll see if it craps out, but... If it doesn't, and I suspect it won't, uh, eh, I'll just have to enjoy it. Huh. Yay, another workshop monitor. Well, this has been running for a while now, and uh, it doesn't seem to be showing any issues at all, so I think I'm going to uh, reassemble it, really. However, I was noting how it didn't really feel all that bright. In fact, if we compare it to the display on my laptop, you can see that that's way, way brighter. So I started doing some research on this particular monitor and this is actually a PVA based display. 
Uh, so the norm for cheap computer monitors is that they are based on the TN display technology and the nerds among you will already know what that means. Uh, to the uninitiated that means that a TN display will look absolutely awful unless it's viewed from straight ahead. Whereas this one, we can go pretty much perpendicular and it's going to look just fine. We get a bit of uh, contrast ratio loss and brightness loss but there's no real lack of image quality. No matter how we move around it looks pretty much the same. Whereas if this were a TN it will look, well, more or less inverted when viewed from this far down. So, this doesn't seem to be that bad a score at all. It still is a very very cheap monitor. They go for about a hundred euros new. But uh, a PVA monitor is not bad. I had a PVA 24 inch for a very long time and it's one of the nicest monitors I ever had. Uh, PVAs are not known for their colour accuracy uh, but they are known for having decent contrast ratios and the good viewing angle. So it's not really that bad at all. Uh, there she is, all reassembled and uh, cleaned up as good as she will get. Uh, uh, worth these dirty dumpster girls, you always get what you pay for. But I think this is going to make a pretty decent random test monitor. The VA technology simply makes it quite useful compared to the other tea and crap I've got lying around, so I'm not complaining. So, with that, thank you for watching. Cheerio!